blessed and have his way. Amen. We lift up the name of Jesus. That's why we're here. Lord. Not to lift up the name of some man or some denomination, but to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to turn to a very familiar place. We're going to turn to the book of Habakkuk. And y'all all looked at you, Frank, you're like familiar. Habakkuk. If you're not familiar with your minor prophets, go to Daniel and start turning real slowly towards the end of the Old Testament. I'll give you time, Habakkuk. It's a very small book, and it's fun to say. to come in one Sunday and do Bible drills all over again. I heard somebody say, there it is. That's wonderful. There it is. Bible, and it's page what, Brother Keith? 955. 955. <laughs> Schofield had that right anyway. He knows how to keep order. <laughs> if you found the book of Habakkuk, say amen. 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 If you have no clue and you've disclosed your Bible, <laughs> say amen. <laughs> okay. We're going to read in Habakkuk chapter number 3. But before we do, it's good to have our friend, Brother Bill Lord, with us here this day from the Men's Prayer Group. And I appreciate his friendship. And I'm going to ask Brother Bill Lord to stand and give us a word of prayer and pray over the message. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it's so good just to be in the house of God this morning. It's so good just to hear the songs of Zion and the and feel the Holy Spirit just move about us and fill our hearts with joy. But Lord, we're praying for the lost this morning. So many of our loved ones is out of the ark of Satan. And this is why we come and why you have sowed the seeds and why we accepted Christ as our Savior. To be a soul winner for Jesus Christ. Be with us this message this morning, Lord. May it stir each and every heart here today. May we go out and tell our loved ones about that amazing grace and what it can do for their lives and, Lord, how it can change their ways because Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He finished it, Lord. And now it's our turn to go out into the highways and the byways and to tell them about Jesus. Guide us as a church and as a people. We pray in the holy name of Christ, our Redeemer and King. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate the prayer. Appreciate that. Thank you, Lord. Habakkuk chapter number three. Uh, as many of you was turning pages. You might have never turned to this book, and that's okay. We're going to learn more about it I, this day. Can I say, just because there's some that are called minor prophets, doesn't mean that their prophecy is minor. It just means that it's short in content. Amen. But the book of Habakkuk has a lot of different things going on here, but we're going to read three verses, and I'll give you a little bit of contextual uh, parts of it just to get you to where we need to be. We'll begin reading in the last three verses, verse number 17. Habakkuk says something very interesting in Scripture here. He says these words. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. 
The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make me or make my feet like hinds feet or simply a deer, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. What's some interesting words we have Amen. in scripture? Amen. Although the fig tree shall not blossom. Very, very different language than we read a lot of times in Scripture. To bring you up to par, we know nothing about the man Habakkuk other than his name. We know not where he's from. We know not when he died. We know nothing of his lineage, uh, his household. We do not know if he was married, had children. We don't know if he lived in a house, in a tent, or on a grassy plain. We do not know. Verse number one in chapter number one simply says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Wouldn't it be something this morning if Jesus tarried his coming down through the ages of time some more? And they look back upon your life and they look back upon my life and the only thing that they could say was they had a burden for Jesus. Wouldn't it be something that they wouldn't look back and say, well, they owned houses and land or uh, cars and this and that or they was at church every Sunday or, or they was doing this or doing that. They had millions in the bank or they lived in poverty. But wouldn't it be good to know that if we left our name behind, the only other thing attached to it would be none other than the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if you've caught on whether you're six, 36, 66, or 106. We're not in a competition one with another. Amen. We're here to bring glory and honor Thank unto you, the name Lord. that is above every name. Thank Friend, you. I'm here to tell you, I could care less this morning if you have three and a half million dollars in your bank account or three uh, pennies in a mason jar at home. That will not do you any good in the service of our Lord. Amen. And I would suggest to you that if the Lord's blessed you with other things, be a blessing to others. Share the will. I know Amen. we don't like that term here in this day and hour, but if the Lord's been a blessing to you, you better be a blessing to somebody else with what he's provisioned you with because in a moment, instant of time, he can take it all away. Amen. Amen. That was free. It had nothing to do with the message. <laughs> but Habakkuk, the only thing that the Bible tells us about this man is that he had a burden. Thank you, Lord. He had a burden for his home. His family. He had a burden for his nation. And he had a burden to see people come to salvation. Well, this is Old Testament. Preacher. Well, we're going to get to that in a minute. That's why I said he uses some interesting literature. We know that he probably experienced the fall of that great city, Nineveh. Y'all know the one in Jonah that Jonah was told to go to, that, that Jonah run the other way, and then y'all know the story. He was swallowed by the big fish. Y'all know that story? He probably saw that city in ruins somewhere around 612 B.C. So it is said that his ministry was about 50 to 55 years, some 598 B.C. to 655, 657. And he saw Judah, and I don't know if you all have looked at your maps, but the nation of Israel at one time because of reasons was divided in a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. Amen. Amen. And he saw Judah, which was the south, <coughs> lying in ruins, the temple destroyed, and he begins to get heartache about it. I'm going to say that again. He saw the land that he loved, the home that he grew up in, 
laying in complete and utter despair. And he got a burden to see something different. Thank you, Lord. Can I say in the days that we're living in, as God's children, we need to put our priorities back to where they need to be. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. God's people have one instruction. Go forth into all the world, preaching and teaching the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Friend, the, the rest is as that old deputy used to say, the rest is gravy from there on out. Right. If your plans are to have some great fortune or leave your kids some big inheritance, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you put that priority above your position as a Christian, then you will fall flat upon your face before God. Amen. We have one job, and that's to lift up the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Habakkuk knew that, and he said this in the first two chapters. The first two chapters, he's contending with the Lord. Y'all ever been in contention with the Lord? You told him what he needed to be doing, when he needed to be doing it, and how he needed to do it? <laughs> I don't even know if I can say that again if I thought through it. We tell him how he ought to be doing things, or ought to be, or is a southern word, by the way. We say, Lord, you, you should be doing this, or Lord, if you had done that, or Lord, if you had been there, this wouldn't have happened. Can I say the Lord doesn't need your opinion nor mine in his doings? Amen. We've been studying a little bit about the attributes of God and one of those things is his sovereignty, friend. If God does it, whether you like it or whether I don't, and God does it, it is good, and it is good. Why? Because he did it. Amen. Now that's hard for us to reach our little feeble minds around. And I will say Habakkuk is getting a general concept. Sometimes we need to come to the realization as God's people, we have a finite brain trying to confine an infinite God and you can't do it. You can't put God in this little nutshell and it works. You have to let him have full reign and free will in your life, and then you'll begin to have some understanding. But if you're trying to comprehend the works of God, friend, they've been trying to do it for thousands of years, and nobody's done it yet. Amen. Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God, that simple little statement, has confounded the minds of the most intelligent human beings on planet Earth that has ever lived. It, uh, it astounded the mind of Einstein. It astounded scientists and medical people. And it's astounded historians. In the beginning, God. Friend, I'm here to tell you, you can't believe 66 books unless you believe those few words. In the beginning, God. Period. Amen. He didn't need our help, and he won't need our help. He just wants to have a relationship with you and I. Habakkuk said these words, although the fig tree shall not blossom. What does that mean? The fig tree in the passage of scripture simply means national prosperity. What Habakkuk is saying is, though the nation of Judah is failing, Though all these things are happening, yet, yeah, he said. Can I say that in Solomon's day in 1 Kings, I think in chapter number 20, uh, 4 and 25, they lived, it said, in their own fruit and their own mind. They lived under, what was it? National prosperity. Can I say if you're sitting under the sound of my voice and, you, and you're anywhere under the age of 100, you've lived through the greatest times in American history. Amen. You've lived through the most prosperous times that this nation has ever known. But all good things come to an end except the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you've been paying attention to reading that word, although the fig tree shall not prosper, friend. America won't always prosper. Amen. 
The Baptist might always not prosper, but can I say whatever God wills, it will be done. There'll be no questions about it. And friend, if America falls flat on her face and is no more by tomorrow morning, God is still on his throne. He is still sovereign. He is still holy. His position has not been rendered. He has not been voted out. God is still sitting upon his throne room. Why? Because he has every right to be there. Why? Because he came in the form of a fleshly servant called Jesus. Jesus Christ and he made his way toward a place called Calvary and he went and sat down beside his father in the throne room of our God and he's the only one that has right to be where he is. Amen. 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 The only one. Though the fig tree shall not blossom. Some of you are so worried about what the stock market's going to be in the morning you can't pay attention to the message. Amen. Amen. Some of you have done got your list of what you're going to do this week at work. Can I say wealth will come, prosperity will come, but it will go. It will go. Matthew 5, 6 says, seek ye first his righteousness, the kingdom, and what all these other things will be added unto you. Not seek all these other things and then the kingdom. It must be the kingdom. Jesus first. Amen. Amen. He says some more things. Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. You know what that means? Peace will not be. Y'all listening? Peace will be the furthest thing from this country. He's talking about Judah. It's not going to happen. No more prosperity. No more days of Solomon. No more peace. Peace. What's the Bible say when we hear peace? Peace. What sudden destruction? Y'all listen. No more peace. I'm happy to say. You having a hard time finding peace in these days? I'd get around the front room of our God. On bending knee and asking, Lord, show me what needs to be. Know me. Literally, that's what the Bible says. And the field shall yield no meat. No food. You say, well, preacher, I've got a freezer full. If you're like me and feeding a family of five, I don't care if you've got ten freezers full. If you can't go to the grocery store from time to time and stock up on the other things that goes with the things in the freezer, it run, it'll run out pretty fast. Amen. In fact, in less than a year's time, and I'm going to say this, uh, there's a few of us that have, have, have uh, uh, killed the fatted calf. Y'all say amen right there. <laughs> and in three families, we've almost went through, and we eat just, uh, the only time we eat beef most of the time is for uh, the dinner or the supper portion. Can I say 850 pounds of processed, packaged, USDA-approved USDA approved beef has lasted less than nine months? 850 pounds of ribeyes and hamburgers and cube steak and I'm getting hungry already. <laughs> Things of this life will not or are meant not to last forever. If you've got a cupboard full, I'd be thanking Jesus Christ for everything in the cupboard. Amen. Friend, I'm here to tell you, even if there ain't full, you still better be thanking him for Amen. what's in the cupboard. Amen, brother. Habakkuk says, though the nation may fall and peace cease to be, and i got a starving belly. And he says something that is so troubling, in order to trouble every child of God in this place, he said, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls well friend that's good bible doctrine that simply means that the houses of god will be empty and there's no way to get in the fold the door is jesus christ there's no way to get in i was sitting here sometime before the morning sunday school service actually sitting right there it was just me jesus and the fans twirling and I want to tell you something without the holy presence of God in this place. It's an awful feeling to look out and see that there's nobody in the pews. 
and there's no cars in the parking lot. But Habakkuk looked down through the ages of time and he looked around his surroundings and he seen a country that was fallen. He seen a country that had once flourished. He had seen despair come. He had seen peace leave. He had seen wealth fall. And he simply seen the temple of God empty. You know this week, just this week, just this week, in Afghanistan, there are audio recordings of a pastor in the United States on the phone with an underground church missionary. And while on the phone, the pastor heard machine gun fire and yelling. And every one of those good Christian soldiers of Christ died a martyr's death simply because they wanted to know more about Jesus Christ. Don't come to me and tell me you've got this on your agenda. Don't come to me and tell me you got that going on this week. Friend, I'm here to tell you if there's people on this globe this morning that are willing to die to hear the words of that book, friend, you and I, are we not much more the better that we ought to give God our time and God our thanks and God our everything? Amen. I think of that one story where this one uh, pastor went to, to, to China and he preached to this crowd of people. And at the end of service, this uh, little Chinese elderly lady come to that pastor and she said these words, Pastor, pray that our people could once worship like you all do in America. Amen. And he said these words, I cannot do that, ma'am. And she said, why? She said, you all walked eight, ten hours to sit on a dirt muddy floor. And listen to me preach a minute message. He said, back home, we drive air conditioner cars from our back homes, drive five minutes to God's house, and we're worried to death when the preacher goes over 45 minutes. That's right. She, he said, ma'am, I can't pray that your church be like mine. But I can pray that my church will be like Thank you. God's not looking for excuses. He's looking for examples Thank you, Lord. of himself in this world. You're not going to win nobody to Jesus Christ coming in here 30 minutes on Sunday, going out and living like the world. Hallelujah, I'm preaching whether you like it or not, living like the world Monday through Saturday, and expect them to believe your testimony. Amen. God said, I took off the old man, and I had a big one, still working on it. And he put on a new. When somebody looks at us, they ought to see Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We do a business affair, we ought to look like Jesus. We play a sport, we ought to look like Jesus. We do, we teach our young children, hallelujah. Somebody ought to say amen right here. We ought to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. No prosperity, no peace, no food, and an empty house. It doesn't stop there. Look at verse 18. Yet. Yet. I could stop right there and preach the rest of the message. I will rejoice. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy. He didn't say I'll have joy. He said I will joy. In the God of my salvation. Well, wait a minute. Salvation? I thought that's for the New Testament saints. Well, back it probably heard passed down through the ages of time, Genesis 3.15, that he'll bruise his head, his heel, and he'll crush his head. The very first prophecy of Jesus Christ. I imagine back it heard a man by the name of Isaiah say, we were wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, chastis the chastisement of his peace, of our peace, was upon him. I imagine Habakkuk heard the words that there's a lamb coming. 
He heard about the tabernacle and the temple. I'm so thankful I don't live in those days. Though I can probably relate in many ways to the Old Testament crowd. And we had to go in and we had to sacrifice our bulls and our goats, our lambs. We had to sacrifice our birds. We had to sacrifice anything if we was poor. Uh, and most of us would be considered we'd take everything we had and just put it upon there that the priest might place it upon the mercy seat. And Habakkuk had seen all that and he had seen how God uh, had, had put, passed judgment upon his people for the simple reason they had rejected what he had told them to do. You see, we could all get out of this mess tomorrow if God's people would just do what God told them to do. Amen. 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 But Habakkuk seen all those sacrifices. He seen Solomon's porch where some 120,000 sheep had had their throats slit in blood. Some waste time, sometimes waste deep in the temple yard. But he didn't say my salvation is in that. Look at what he says. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He heard about a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. And he went to a place called Calvary. And he bled and died. He said, yeah, well, I joy. You got joy? Some of you ain't had joy since you got up this morning. Some of you ain't had no joy in the last month. Some of you ain't had no joy in the last five years. Some of you ain't had joy in a long, long time. But can I say this? There is joy in the Lord. Amen. There is joy in his presence. There is joy in coming and getting to be with God's people on God's property on the Lord's day. There is joy about getting up and cleaning yourself up, wearing, wearing a suit and tie or hallelujah bibbed overalls, or we'll go back a few days, maybe he's wearing some camel hair and that locust and honey in your beard. Friend, there's something nice and there's something joyful and there's something to be happy about in being a Christian. Amen. Now back except these, I'm going to put this in uh, hillbilly English for you. Lord, I've contended with you these first two writings. And he did. Lord, why this? Why that? Why that? But in the third chapter, he quits contending with him. And he starts submitting to him. And he said, Lord, although these things happen, yet will I rejoice Thank you, Lord. in the God of my salvation. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know what? Jesus Christ is who he said he is and so much the more. Praise his name. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like the hind's feet and he will make me to walk upon mine eye places. I studied that hind's feet out a little bit. That's a red stag, by the way. Red deer. And sometimes they live in the rocky region. On the steep slopes. They were built for it. Thank you, Lord. Whether you believe this or not, no matter what trial or tribulation you're going through, if you made the Lord your Savior, you're built for it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise his name. He makes it personal. He says these words. To the chief, or he says this. Make me like the hinds feet will make me to walk upon mine high places. Whose high places? Mine. He makes it personal. I'm glad I got a personal Savior this morning. Amen. That I can go to him and tell him all of my personal things. Mm -hmm. Now as a church we can go to him collectively, but aren't you glad y'all didn't have to come to me in some confessional booth this morning and say, Father, for I have sinned. I'm glad I didn't have to come either. Thank you. But I can't say this. Father, forgive me. Thank you, Lord. I claim the blood of your dear son. I claim Calvary. <laughs> One of these days we're going to stand before him individually. And we're going to give him a count what we've done for his service. And it's not till after that fact that he says, I shall wipe all the tears away from their eyes. It'll be a long day in glory. 
But Habakkuk says, yeah. What are you rejoicing in this morning? Miss Cindy, come give me whatever's on your heart. Give me 410, please. What are you rejoicing in? Your job? Your health? Your preaching? Your church? These shall fail. When my mother and my father forsake me, the Bible says, he'll still be my friend. Amen. When the nations fall, he'll still be God. When peace cannot be found, he is still peace. Amen. And he is still Lord. When food can't be found in a cupboard, it can be found in a book. Amen. When there is no shelter over our heads, there is a refuge under the wings of the Almighty. There is help in time of need. He is a constant. He is a friend. He is faithful. He is who he says he is. He is God. Amen. There is none like him. James said there is no shadow of turning in him. He's been when the sun first kissed the morning. He was there. The kids got out the other night and said Boy, that had me running fit to drive. It was clear as a bell. If you don't know what that is, go home and study Appalachian history, and you'll know what clear as a bell means. And that stars have a word. Billy looked at me and he said, How many is up there, Danny? I said, Trillions, billions, and way more than that. He didn't stop there, I'm thankful. He said, Why are they there? Some of y'all better get a hold of this. And I just looked up in all my infinite wisdom and I said, Jesus put them there. Thank you, Lord. He put them there. When the world is falling apart, yet will I rejoice in the God of my salvation. I want to ask you this morning, if machine gun fire took place here today, or some maniac come through the doors and took us all out. Would you still be here? Or would you run and hide in the hills and valleys? Friend, I'm here to tell you, Jesus will give you what you need. When you need it. Friend, why? Because he said that he is God. And he is Lord. And he is who he says he is. We need some Christians that will take up the banner. And go on for the glory of God. We don't need some Sunday morning pew warmers. We need some people to get a hold of God and say, God, whatever it is, show us. Whatever we need, give it to us. And he'll give us just that. I'm going to turn to one passage and I'm done. Jeremiah chapter number 17 and verse 7. I believe that Habakkuk heard these words from that prophet man. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I want to be fruitful. Some of you ain't prayed in years. When I mean pray, I mean pray. I'm talking about getting a hold of God. And you need to. Thank you. you wonder why your life's falling apart. How many of you daddies out there ever put together a Christmas toy for Santa Claus? And you thought she was a big boy. And you're going to do it all by yourself. And four and a half hours later, 29 cups of coffee. You're sitting there looking at page one in the owner's manual. Here we are on 
almost 2,100 years later. And we've been trying to do it all on our own. I say we start with page one Amen. of the owner's manual. Amen. And we might start to see some things come together on behalf of God's people. We've been sitting in the floor with pieces strung out all over the church house. And God said, I've been trying to tell you how to do it all alone. He said, if you walk contrary unto my commandments, if you walk contrary to my will, I'll send upon you seven more plagues uh, according to thy sins. But if my people, which are called by my name, Amen. shall humble themselves and pray, Amen. turn, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He ain't talking about the world. He's talking about the church. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. Then, he says, I'll hear from heaven. And I'll heal their land. Amen. You're going to go home today and do it like you've always done it. Your way. The preacher's way. The Baptist way. Are you going to go home today and get the instruction manual and figure out how to put the pieces back together? Brother Leonard, if you're watching today, I got this from you. That's an altar, by the way. It's not a stage. It's not a prop. It's an altar. For y'all good football fans, that's the end zone. And I don't know about you, but I'd score a touchdown if I was you. Would you come? Who's going to come? Nobody's got to bow their heads. Just come. 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 Come on. Don't be bashful. Come.